Hi everyone, I'm Clayton DeCorn at JLC Live in Providence. I'm with Bill Lees of Central Coast Waterproofing out of San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo. And you specialize in walkable deck surfaces. What is that? Can you? Uh, well, walkable deck surfaces are exactly what they mean. It's a deck system that is designed to be walked upon, unlike a lot of roofing systems which are just designed to be roofing instead of something that you can walk on at the same time. And they're often over livable space, right? Very so. often over living space. So, so is it a roof or a deck? Well, that's a good question, <laughs> isn't it? And my answer to that is that first it's a roof and then it's a deck because it does need to keep the interior contents of your home dry. So as a roof deck, it do, does a dual purpose. And I heard you say in your session that the waterproofing is, is really in the, is not hard to do, but it's really in the details. Um, it's, a, a successful deck really starts with framing though, right? That's correct. The installation of the deck system all relies on the proper building of the deck framing for us to be able to have a long life deck system that will be there 30 years from now. So can you just paint a picture for me verbally by giving me a, an example of best practice deck assembly the, from a framing Well, from a framing sub, uh, point of view, what we want to see is uh, it built to the maximum amount possible rather than the bare minimum what code requires. So, mm -hmm. you know, what we find is that code requires a 5 8 inch plywood deck over 2 by 8 joist 16 inches on center. So what we're looking for is really uh, inch and an eighth or three quarter inch plywood mm -hmm. over joists that are two by 10 or two by 12 and maybe they're 10 inches or 12 inches on center to reduce deflection and movement in the deck. So that's where it all starts from is right there in the framing. So in order to get the kind of deflection, um, you're sometimes limited by the, the depth of the, the joist that you can use. I mean, ideally we'd be using a, a two by 12 or or, or something really beefy, but if we are limited, how do we, where do we go from there? Well, there are a couple of different ways you can do that, and the easiest way to accomplish that is usually with extra joists in there, where instead of going two by 16, or 16 inches on center, we'll go eight inches on center to be able to get that deck stiff enough so that eight we inches. reduce the deflection. Of course, I'm not doing that, the contractor is doing that, and that's why we want to be involved with the contractor early on from the deck project so that we can eliminate those kinds of problems before we get called in and say we need to waterproof this mm -hmm. and start going. So if we're actively yeah. involved early, we can alleviate problems that may crop up later on. Sure. You mentioned one and an eighth inch plywood. That's pretty beefy stuff. Does the, is the grade dependent on the the coating that's going to go on top of it? Or? Absolutely. The coatings, the different coatings that are available to us all have different uh, plywood requirements and some of them require an exposure one rough grade plywood and some of them require smooth sanded plywood that has no flaws or bands in it or footballs, what we call, uh, to avoid reflecting through the coating. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the coating of what you're going to use for the plywood and that's why it's so important to get the deck contractor involved early on so that we don't have those problems where mm -hmm. that plywood isn't acceptable, we need to skin it back over with a 3 8 inch sheet of plywood that's better for it and won't we'll reflect see. that. Yeah. And talk to me a little bit about the installation of the plywood in order to get the kind of performance you're looking for your coating? Well, the installation of the plywood starts uh, obviously with over the framing and the first thing that they need to do is they need to make sure that it's going to be blocked properly on where all the plywood seams are going to go. So instead of blocking it with 2x4, we want you to see you use a 2x6 so that there's plenty of beef on that to get your plywood nailed or screwed off on that. Mm -hmm. um, then once you've got that done, you can get your plywood on and make sure that it's glued and screwed down properly with the right plywood that we're going to use uh, or the manufacturer requires us mm -hmm. to use to put their coating on top of. And I assume in your staggering panels and gapping the panels yes. as well? Yes. I don't usually do that kind of work. The right. general contractor will do that, but we want to see the panel staggered and uh, spaced appropriately too. There's got to be gapping in between the plywood panels to allow for expansion and contraction 
and that's easily accomplished just by using an eight penny nail in between to set your panels in so that you have proper gap. So I heard you say in your session that the slope of the deck is really important. How is that done at framing? Well, in s s framing a deck is easy to do and sloping it at the same time, or I should say sloping the deck at the time of framing is the easiest thing to do. Um, and that's most easily accomplished by simply taking the joists and ripping them down a quarter inch a foot for the length of that run of the deck. Um, other ways that we can slope a deck are through the use of if the deck is sloped or uh, frame flat, we can slope it with, via rip strips on top of that flat deck. Um, or we can use cementitious materials and such to make the deck slope to the degree that we need. So minimum of uh, slope is a quarter inch per foot. Um, that's code required, but some mm -hmm. decks we want to have even more slope on it than that. So can you, you can build like crickets though on top of the deck as well to, to do that. Do you yes. ever get into doing that kind of work after the deck is framed? Or? We do. We often will build crickets into the deck via our deck materials, the coating materials that we use with the cementitious products, and uh, do crickets with that with reverse slope to make water move over to an edge or to a drain or wherever it needs to go. And that's accomplished with the materials. What we do in that case, though, is we always disclaim responsibility for ponding water because hand sloping the deck can be more difficult than building it with the framing and sloping it in the framing. So mm -hmm. you may get some nominal ponding if you do hand sloping on top of the deck. And I imagine you're probably limited by how much you can slope based on the conditions that you encounter. Is Absolutely. In right? a remodel type situation, existing field conditions will very often slow us down with what we can do to the deck to slope it. Uh, threshold heights of doors, clearance on siding and such like that will restrict that, whereas on a newly built home, new deck, uh, we have more options available to us that don't restrict it as much. What do you like to see for the threshold of a door in terms of the, the minimum height? We want the door about an inch above the uh, height of the deck, the final finished height of the deck, so if you're going to have a 3 16 deck system, and the plywood is an inch, then you're going to have a little bit less clearance. So we want to have it built up so that you have an inch final clearance after the deck is built. So a, a two by laying on the deck surface um, plywood will give, would, you that. Would give you that if yes. the door is sitting up on a Absolutely. plate. Absolutely. So it works very well that way and it's easy to do. Well, that's really good information. Thanks a lot. You're Thanks welcome. Appreciate it again.